everybody. This is Donna Woods at Photonic Health, and this is our Health Made Simple webinar for Wednesday, October 27th of 2021. And my guest today, I am so excited. Um, I'm so excited, you guys, um, is Sh Shadow Montag. And um, we came across Shadow gosh, I think four years ago. Yeah. And Brian was at, at working a trade show and he came across this full size ad and it was of this young man doing Roman riding and jumping two horses through a ring of fire, which is amazing, incredible. But then the little pictures beside it is the same young man holding one of our pro lights and red lighting a horse. And Brian messaged me immediately and went, who is this guy? I have, I have no idea, but you, we need to find out. And mm -hmm. since then, um, Shadow like has become an affiliate for us. And um, we've gotten to learn a lot more about him. And he's just quite a remarkable young man. So this is actually the first time that him and I have ever met quasi face-to-face -face. so shadow welcome yes thank you for having me um yeah it was in indiana where i was doing a little trade show there and i just had my little red light in my posters that i had for marketing and whatnot but so thankful for it because i came across it uh for tonic health too um just researching just learning how to keep my horses sound on the road and thankfully you know i've been trick riding and roman riding since i was 12 years old so um i'm now 28 you can do the math <laughs> but uh but no legit this um towards the end of my career with roman riding because i did have to retire my right hand my right horse that uh, i stand on um because he has ring bone um but it's very manageable and he has been quite frankly sound i mean he's been doing well and that is a, all due respect to the red lighting and helping him in that aspect and i was able to finish the tour with it so i mean it i've seen it firsthand so. yay yay and the intent i told shadow before we started that the intent wasn't for him to necessarily talk about red light unless he wanted to because mm. we wanted to get to know him better but it's also great to hear like the reason that he found us um, and his personal successes with it. And so you talked about touring. So where are you right now? I am right now in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee at the Dolly Parton Stampede, working for Dolly for her Christmas season. Um, so I came and watched a show about uh, five weeks ago with my family. And I was pulled aside by a manager and said, hey, would you be interested in coming back and helping out for the Christmas season? Um, you know, just with everyone bouncing back from COVID and short staff. And then we got some riders and we got some dancers and mix of both. But um, believe me, I am by all means no dancer, but I ride horses. So they need more horse riders. So I came in and just started working some of these horses here. And, and there's one in particular that they want me to work with. And. His name is Flynn and he's a saddlebred and he does, um, it's a high squack, you know, the marching, the bowing and the rearing. And there's like princesses that come out of the ceiling and light up dresses. And then there's like this big build up of music and fog. And then there's the prince that comes out on the horse and he marches, he bows, he rears. And so that was, I'm the prince to this act, I guess. Is You're the, you say. <laughs> that's yeah. so cool. So that he is... comes out. So yeah. cool. So how did they know about you? Like, have you worked for Dollywood before? Yeah, I worked for her for five years before. Oh. And I left. Yes. So I left. I took a break. I went back home and I got accepted into Ohio State and their pre-vet program. And I decided to take a college route a little bit more, but still be involved with horses. You know, I started a leadership camp, but I still went into, you know, pursue college, you know. Um, something more promising than just standing on horses and doing crazy things. But, um, but I still, you know, I took a break and I came down and, you know, and I was so thankful that they asked me to come back to help out, you know, because I get the best of both worlds right now because I'm online with school too. So 
I'm doing my homework in the morning and I'm doing the training in the evenings and stuff. So I'm about averaging about 12 hour days, one oh day off goodness. a week. So. Wow. That, that's like all, that, well, I mean, you're still getting, you're getting to work with, I'm partial to saddlebreds cause I've got two myself. Um, yeah. they're smart, man. They're smart. Too smart. Too smart. Yeah, I know. I feel stupid. <laughs> that's what they are right we've no. got we got six different breeds at our farm um and nine different horses and um and man like the saddlebreds like they are just like wicked smart but also mine are like super personable they're like oh hey hi hi hey, let's do something like they want the engagement and they want the interaction and they they love being like their brain loves to be challenged. Is right. that what you find as well? Absolutely. I mean, and I find it myself being challenged, which I like. Um, yeah. Is you know, there's over 32 horses in the show. So riding, you know, me working with a saddlebred, he only does one act. So being able to change your hands, the movements, and, and the way you ride to the regular horses for the rest of the show it's a little bit adaptation that I had to find, you know, right. because, you know, my one horse, the saddlebred, you know, he's like, I don't know what you're doing to me. You, you know who you're riding? <laughs> you know, right. Like, right. So right. I kind of find the game there. And now, um, but like, he wasn't in the show for a while. Um, he just kind of was like on break because no one really understood him or I guess nervous about him. Um, and then I, he just did his first show yesterday. And Aww. I put him in yesterday and he did so good. I'm so proud. Aww. Um, yes, I'm very, very well proud of him. And now, um, now we're going to have to go. We are going to, Brian and I are going to have to come up and we're going to have to, we've never been there. So now we're going to have to come. Oh yeah, you got to. There's a, there's so many different disciplines here too in the show. And that's what I really like about it. The, the diversity of it. And the show has a wonderful nativity scene this year. Uh, we've been in rehearsals right now. Like I'm in the office, so I can look over right now. I can see some of them still rehearsing because I'm at work right now. But um, no, it's fun that we have camels. Like I'm a I'm a wise man this year, riding a camel. Yay! <laughs> so there's different <laughs> things we could do that. Um, so just I don't know. I just kind of say I'm a, I guess a jack of all trades and master at none at this point. But I really enjoy it. <laughs> right. Well. Well, you know, I think that's maybe an old saying that maybe has had, like, when we talk about that, you know, like, when you're, like, it's very specific, you know, like a plumber mm -hmm. or, or whatnot, but you're really, now, if I'm not mistaken, you have more than horses, I also know you have dogs, and I also know you have cats, but I also <laughs> believe you have birds, too, like, you yes. are not, you're not just like a horse guy. You're like uh, an animal guy. Yeah. I, I love it all together. Um, uh, yes. Um, the only thing I have not been able to get myself just yet is snakes, but I'm working on it. I pet my first snake the other day, but it's just a little different there. Yeah. Um, but no, like I have, uh, I had an African gray and a blue and gold McCall and, um, I actually red lighted. Remember a long time ago where my blue and gold McCall like had something going on and I red lighted it and it, it helped her. Right. Um, she was awesome. And, um, but she did pass away. Um, yeah. What, um, but no, basically, you know, just some people just get older or whatever, or being in the university or being around the hospital or working different types of shelters and clinics. Like, you know, like beginning of summer of this year, I came home with two turtles that came from the Humane Society because they had severe shell rot and, I said, well, why not try? And they made a full recovery. They're in my fish pond, <laughs> koi fish pond, and do their thing now. But it helps. that's awesome. Yeah. So, so, so you're actually an animal expert, you know. So that would be what the, the you know, I would say the master, the, you know, I wouldn't necessarily yeah. call it. Yeah, absolutely. I, like Abs I go along with them. Absolutely. Um, and the other thing is, um, kids, I heard you have a special thing with kids. So you run, you, yes. you're, you're a busy guy. I can, I'm busy. I cannot keep up with you. 
tell me <laughs> about you run a kids camp and if I'm not mistaken, it's like a foundation. And so it's a nonprofit. It's so tell me more about that. Yeah. So, um, so the long story, I'm going to start off how kind of what, how it came about is that, um, when I first started learning to trick ride and do acrobatic stunts on horses and learn how to roam and ride, you know, I was self-taught for a lot of it. And then I was able to break in and get some connections and learn about, you know, some professional training, but it was a tough thing, you know? Um, and sometimes you see in show business is that it's generations after generations that follow suit for a specific act. Um, and families like sometimes families can be very uptight with techniques and learning things. And, and, um, and I started to see a lot of that industry. I experienced it firsthand. So I was like, you gotta break this cycle because what had happened was is that the trick riding industry when I first started was estimated about a hundred trick riders professionally. Wow. Um, and it was a dying art. And everyone's like, oh, it's a dying art. No one's doing it. Well, it's a dying art because no one's paying this knowledge for it. They're dying with it, and that's it. So um, I decided I'm gonna learn everything I can and break this cycle, and I want to get involved. So I started past the torch leadership camp. And the past the torch is all about passing the knowledge, the leadership skills, you know, unity and diversity, passing all these life skills to the next generation of trick riders. And so they come to the, my four day camp and they learn the ins and outs about how to do trick riding, learn the safety protocols. They learn all about the horses and they are divided up on teams. So what it is, is this is the leadership part of it where each I have 32 families this year coming. So, oh my God. Yes. We started three years ago with only 14 kids. And now we have 32 and we have about 20 on the waiting list. And no, I'm not going to do another camp. <laughs> I just, <laughs> you know. but it's just, it filled up in less than two weeks. But what it is, is that these kids are put on two teams and there's four teams that are color coded. And that's, they compete through like different like challenges throughout the weekend that's forced them to like use leadership skills. And the biggest reference I learned that I use is it's kind of like that show Survivor on CBS. Like they're on their tribes and they do like these competitions and they win. And, and, and so they compete all weekend long and pushing each other. And little do they know that the kid, the little kid that came on the first day that's so shy that, that cried and didn't want to leave and didn't want to do this is like the star on the last show on the last right. day because you know they learn these leadership skills just you know by accidental kind of too just in the challenges you know and so what we do is at the last day of camp is that they get to showcase all their hard work that they have done and they work all weekend long and then I have a production team and they work with the professionals and they do a real live show for friends and family that's open to the public. And this is where the sponsors come in. You know, we're so thankful for the sponsors that we had is that these kids get to, you know, get their hair and makeup done professionally. They get oh. the whole treatment done and they get the real taste of what show businesses should be like. And, and, you know, and the kids that are like, you know, interested in certain things too, you know, our instructors will perform along with them and pass the torch to them. So that's uh, like, you know, and not to mention after every night of riding, this is all in Ohio at a ranch, but at the, every night of riding, they can choose an elective, you know? Uh, so maybe they say, oh, I'm not interested in trick riding. I want to do some off with horses. So they can select the elective like Liberty, Roman riding, or even aerial silks, learn different other things that they like. And if they like it and they say, this is, this is me, this is who I am, this is what I want to do and what I want to perform. Well, in our friends and family show, they'll work and perform with our professionals and the professional will perform first so they can see the act. And then the, you know, the announcers or whatever will say, and ladies and gentlemen, passing the torch to the next generation. And then the little kid comes out and does the routine. Oh my God, you're so going to make just, me cry. It sounds it's amazing. amazing. There's, that's amazing. I know. I love it. Um, besides the camp, I probably lose about 10 pounds each year doing it because I'm always running all over the place. But it's so fun. <laughs> it's just so fun. 
Um, but, you know, I just didn't want to do a camp. You know, I've been to several camps and clinics and, you know, and I'm not knocking anything. I loved it. I learned a lot. You know, I paid my dues. I paid my money. I learned a lot and I loved it. But I noticed I want to create an experience. I want to create an environment. Whereas I know if anyone was like me when they went to a clinic, I was so nervous. I couldn't be, naturally, I just couldn't be myself. I was so nervous. I was like, what if I do this? What if I do this? You know what I mean? What about what other people think? And so the environment here is kind of easy, chill, go on. And, and, and that way they can feel comfortable and just learn and have fun. There's no right or wrong. As long as courses are supposed to be fun. That's it. That's what I like to do. And, you know, and, and that's what another joke I made to Pat Pirelli one time at, at a show. I go, you know, he's complimenting my horse or whatever. And I looked at Pat. I said, you know what? I have, I actually, all due respect, I didn't know, I, I didn't know who he was at first because <laughs> I had a brain injury. So I use that as my excuse. But I, um, I went to him and I said, oh my gosh, you are a trainer, like a real, wow. Like, and I said, let me just tell you something because I knew he was going to watch my show. I said, I'm going to tell you right now, I am not a trainer. I'm an entertainer. Don't just, <laughs> and he started laughing. He said, I got you, you know, because yeah. I just like to have fun. You know, and people are like, that's Pat Perella. Like, Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, I and, you know, we've had, um, we've had a 20 year working relationship with Pat um, mm -hmm. and the Pirelli program. And they actually, his program is kind of what kept us into horses because you know, Brian and I decided our first tour should be a four month old Appaloosa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not smart, mm -hmm. but she, she's taught us a lot. She's changed our life in more ways than we can imagine. And, you know, with being able to see the behind the scenes things with Pat, he's very mm -hmm. passionate about making sure people are safe. And at the end of the day, he really wants people to have fun with their horses. Like right. a lot of people think you know, lots of different things, but at the end of the day, he wants people to be safe. Um, he wants them to be fun and he wants them to be in the longevity of it. He doesn't want right. people to quit horses. He wants people to make it a lifetime passion. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm glad you got to meet him and I'm sure yeah. he's very, very complimentary because, yeah. you know, you were having a great he's time. Also amazing. Yes. And another thing too is that um, with the with like the camp and stuff too, I also wanted to do like um, I just didn't want to teach the kids, you know, right. um, because when they go home, I want them to have a resource. So call me crazy, but I let the parents stay all weekend long. And when the kids are in session, like in the arena, learning the trick rider, do whatever they need to do, uh, the parents are in seminars. They're learning about the industry. They're learning about contracts. They're learning about how to market their child, how to keep the child safe, what to do on a rain date. Oh my gosh. Just all the acts, how to keep the whole thing. I mean, it's all, yeah. I mean, absolutely. This is, I mean, I'm all for it. This is so open-ended, you yeah. know, yeah. that it's, that's what I like because I think a lot of it's just, you know, basically I always, my method, I tell the staff and the production team that helped me do this is that my goal is to try to eliminate as much dance mom mentality right right absolutely and the, i love it i love the fact that you're giving the parents the education behind it as well because that's something mm -hmm. that is kind of like nobody's talking about right and right. and the parents need to know the real aspect behind it as well um mm -hmm. as well as the kids so my question to you is, we've got lots of passionate horse owners out there. Um, we have lots of passionate horse lovers out there as well that will be watching this. How could, like, what does a sponsorship look like? How could they get involved? How they could, how can they help support your mission? How can we, how can we help you? Yeah, so a lot of the, um, so a lot of the sponsorship and everything that comes into that, um, Look, we just started. So a lot of it goes into, you know, helping our resources with like the, the production end of it, the show. Um, we, we hire in trainers to come in. We have to fly them in, you know, because what it is is that I want the kids to have a, also a diversity of, of professionals to work with because they, end up, they rotate throughout the day. So they get all aspects on how to do something. Okay. And there's more than one way to, to do it, you know. 
So, right. but you know, and then the hotel lodging. So all that stuff is like the the necessary, like oh, the stuff people don't really think about. That like, all goes into it, you know. Right. Um, and then on top of that too is that my family owns a rodeo company, so a lot of our sponsors that sponsor the camp, you know, they also honor it with the International Pro Rodeo Association, and we honor it throughout the year for that too. Um, ideally, a lot of it, um, the sponsors, like our our goal, like our top i'm obviously not the one that's in the office that talks about this all the time but um i have a uh, friends and family and some workers that do it back home um, while i'm working here but a lot of it is just like you know i know that the top tier sponsor will get like their logo on the back of the t-shirt everywhere we send welcoming patches out in the mail so right. i write each kid a personal letter so that like they're branded everywhere we actually had a new sponsor last year that came on board which was a big hit um espana silk was a good um shampoo and conditioner type of natural yeah. love love them and what it was is these kids are competing all weekend long and they do like different like costume contests and different things that they can earn points to win the overall weekend so a lot of the sponsor money goes into the prizes that oh. these kids get to go home with and and stuff like that to make that the experience for them. So yeah. there's just so many loopholes. Um, what I can do if anyone is interested or whatever, um, when I get some time before we'll, we'll be after the first of the year, but I can like send like an email, like a layout of things sure. and we can brainstorm or yeah. reach out to me and we can contact, we can brainstorm. There's I'm the type of person I like to see what can we make a win-win situation, you know? Sure. Um, but all, the moral of the story and what I stand for is, and the principle of it is that it's a kids leadership camp. And, you know, I want more positivity in this world and every aspect and unity. And, you know, the slogan is paving the way with leadership. And I left the open end of it because it's not just horses. Horses is my main thing, obviously, but in life in general, you know. Well, and as you know, like I know personally, like, the experiences and the uh, things that my horses have taught me um, transcend through every relationship that we have. And right. whether it's a business relationship um, or a personal relationship or just a friendship. And so they are incredible teachers. Um, you, you know that. And, um, and so I love that, even though the child may not necessarily stay into horses or it might just be kind of a seasonal or a season of right. their life, um, yeah. they're going to walk away with, oh my God, can I go, can I, can I just, I want to rewind time. Mm -hmm. For a little bit and can I go back to being 12 and can I come to your camp <laughs> yeah no literally this is the biggest compliment I've ever gotten and um there was a girl that came to my camp and her parent was there and this girl was having she was I think she was 13 at the time and she's in school and she's being bullied and she had no self-esteem didn't talk to nobody it was just very down you know and and the first day at camp too like she she was a standoffish, just was, had real bad anxiety. And, and the mom was upset, you know, obviously it was her kid, you know. And um, last day of the camp, the mother came up and gave me the biggest hug and cried. And she said, I know my daughter not be the next big trick rider in the industry. But what you did and what this camp did for her was give her self-confidence, build her self-esteem. And she is so confident in herself and so happy. And she's ready to take on life. Oh. and it was and that's what it's all about because you know they they learn to work hard they learn to grind and get and learn at their level at their pace you know the, the camp is designed for every skill level so there is no right or wrong that's the way i wanted it you know there is no who's better than who there, there is we're right. together that's why right. there's teams and yes. They work together, and at the end, they do the friends and family show in front of a live audience and feel the energy of people clapping and standing for them. I mean, their makeup looked good before the show, and after the show, it just oh. <laughs> they were so happy, you Yay. know. And, and, and now, when when, when is this camp, and where is it? It's the third weekend in June. It's it's in Belmont, Ohio. Um, it's at my family's ranch. Um, if you want to write this down, it's called. Pass the torch leadership camp dot com it has okay. all the information on there, and um, and it, it is it's it's truly amazing and just you know I and I 
there's times too where we have bonfires where it's great like the environment where the professionals in the industry you know um they come around they, they gather around a campfire and tell stories and stuff because i think sometimes i know there's a there's a gap where there's a professional and yeah. then there's the people who are doing clinics and stuff and there's like a wall well that wall comes down because at the end of the day we're, we're all the same you know we all started somewhere and Absolutely. so that's where that came in and that you know i was yeah, I mean, I've been blessed with several opportunities, but it makes me no different than anyone else. It's just my path of life that was for me. Right. So that's why I like to encourage it too. And that's the thing too, is that, um, sorry, I go on a rant. I get, I get angry. I get honest about it. But no, when people come to camp with different goals and, and whether it, whatever it be, and it may be something that I may not know or my, none of the staff may know. Right. Okay. But, but um, if we can just provide that environment, yeah. where they can take something on their own and apply it to their own life. That's a yeah. win. Oh, that's a win. Oh my God. Ab- absolutely. Absolutely. I absolutely love your whole concept of that. Um, uh, you probably don't know this about us, but Brian and I used to run swing dance competitions. Um, mm-hmm. We, and we ran a dance competition. And when we had entered into that arena, it was very individualized and I didn't feel like people were supporting people. And, you know, you had the beginners and you had the advanced and the advanced would only interact with the advanced. And there was no, how are people going to get better if they can't, you know, Mm -hmm. engage. And so we created a team concept and it just blew up. And um, it was just great to be able to watch teams come together and support each other and encourage each other. And, and the growth that happens when you do that is like 10 times faster than if you were to mm-hmm. try to do it by yourself. So I and absolutely love that. Yeah. And it's kind of designed too, like in the application process, you know, they, they tell us their goals and what they want. We kind of get a lot of history about them. And what we'll do is that the, there's four teams. So there's blue, green, orange, and pink. And the teams are designed. We we we. I will sit down and I'll lay out all the all the goals of each and every student that is coming, and then I'll place them on the teams where we kind of have a little bit of a mix of whatever. And what happens? What that creates is that the teams can't really move forward unless everyone's on the same page. Oh, and and so it, they naturally will start pushing each other to do better regardless. And, and the, what the mindset is, you know, the way someone writes something or will do something or do a trick a different way, there's not necessarily that's wrong. It's just different. That's how they like to execute it, you know. So it, it shows the appreciation of another equestrian, right? You know, like yeah. the respect of another person or human being and yeah. accepting like that's their normal, you know. Right. And that's, there's, that's what there's, they do. there's more than one way to get to the end goal. Exactly. And that's what they do in the friends and family show on the last day. Oh my God. They perform You're together. You're a so, genius. Well, uh, normally my show goes about 45 minutes to an hour, but I understand that you have, you have a show that you've got to ride in and you've got to yes. run your horse up. It has been a half an hour yes. already. I would the love arena to talk lights, to you more. No, the arena lights just came on, so I could see. But let me give you, I'll give you a quick, quick glimpse of where I'm at. So, for everybody that just so joined us, one. Shadow is mm-hmm. at Dollywood Stampede, and he mm-hmm. is a he is riding in the show. And so, that's a glimpse of the arena. He is going to be there through the holiday season. The last show will be that he'll be in will be uh january 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 second january 2nd so So. um shadow thank you so much we no problem absolutely adore you um not just because you use our lights but um we could just feel your heart we can feel your spirit we can feel that you're changing the world um, I'll try it, giant yeah. ways and we just are that's such an amazing beautiful gift um i and- just i'm just so thankful that you know that your husband ran into my side and asked who's that kid and we crossed paths and 
and and just so honored to be part of this and in, in photonic health and even when i graduate from vet school and continue i you know it's just it's just something to, to have you know that's the that's my plan but my god has other plans maybe whatever we don't know i live whatever. my life we, we, we don't know, but I think That's I'm right. going to start planning to come up and uh, visit you, you and see your show and meet your you saddle friend you. That's in the show. Yes. Yes. Send me a text message and I'll send you a picture of him before he goes in the show tonight. Oh, perfect. All righty. All right. And you can post it. Thank so. you. And we will You're see welcome. what we can do to support you on that um, fabulous leadership. Yes. Yep, that's incredible. Yes. I'll get something together, an email, or we can brainstorm. We get plenty of time. Um, we're usually do it after the January, after the first of the year, because we have a, a concrete of all of our people. So perfect. Sounds right. fabulous. Thank you. See you guys. Have Thank a great you. show. All righty. Bye. And for everybody that's here, what we'll do is we will go ahead and we will send out the recording um, if you'd like to see it again. And we will be continuing to follow Shadow and especially with everything that he has going on. Um, so, and what we'll do is we'll put a link in the email um, about him and then we'll, prob we'll probably put one on his, for his social media as well so you guys can find him because this... I mean, it's taken me everything I can to not cry because um, he's so amazing. But I also know that there's a lot of people out there that can help support his mission um, in lots of different ways. So I'm excited to see what this young man does. And I'm just blessed that we have him as part of our team. So with that, you guys have a great, great evening. And we will see you next month. I will be interviewing my fabulous husband, Brian Owen. So we'll see you guys next month.